Tom Johnny. It's time for Disneyland. Okay, let's just get this right out of the way. Despite my love for Phineas and Ferb, and perhaps Gravity Best Falls, Disney cartoon ever, I really don't like the Disney oh, yeah. cartoon. Before you ask, Pixar was acquired, and Star Wars doesn't really count, because that was just outright purchased. Oh, yeah. It's far too sweet, and that copyright poison at the bottom? Ugh, you should know my feelings about that. But Disney has, and Disneyland especially, the concept of user experience down. They just have the concept of experience down. Like the second you start walking through the gate. And I'm not talking like the park admissions gate. I'm talking the property gate. Like one thing I noticed is that as you're walking into the park, you have to go through a security checkpoint and they ruffle through your bags and maybe you have to go through a metal detector. And then you go through admissions. That's almost like passport control because they're all taking your picture and stuff. And then you get in the park. And it's almost like you're going into a foreign country. So after you've gone through the park entrance, you have to go into this tunnel. And there's this plaque above the tunnel. And it says, here you leave today and enter the world of tomorrow slash yesterday and fantasy. And not only that, but going through this tunnel hides a large portion of Main Street USA. It's like a whole bunch of little shops and restaurants and a movie theater and the main information area, which is incidentally enough, the city hall. You're literally transported from this one world, which is the park admissions, into the other world of Main Street USA. That in and of itself is pretty fascinating how they use tunnels and architecture to hide Main Street USA from you until you're actually inside of it. But on top of that, they use every architectural and design trick in the book to really put you into a whole new world. Like a for instance, and this is just the first layer. So the street on Main Street USA is asphalt, blacktop. And what that does is it holds in the heat of the sun and it makes the street really, really hot. So it's pushing people either into the park and off the street or into the shops to spend money. Not only that, but there's a lot of forced perspective going on, not just with the castle, which is the most obvious, but also with the buildings themselves. Like the first floor is really seven eighths as high as it should be. And the second floor is even shorter, but it gives the impression of it being much bigger than it actually is. Once you get to the center of Disneyland, yeah, there's the statue of Walt and Mickey and blah, blah, blah. But again, everything is open air and it's a significantly warmer place than further in the bowels of the theme park. And the theme park is split off into individual sections too. So you got your Tomorrowland and your Adventureland and your Frontier Town and your blah, blah, blah. But each individual section has its own mood. And you can even tell just by looking at the entrances. As a for instance, the entrance between Frontierland and Adventureland. There's a dark dividing line. So each section of the park also has its own individual look. The ground of each section is paved differently. The vegetation is different. The garbage cans are different. Everybody's uniforms are different. The music being piped out is different. Even the smells are different. They literally pump in smells to make sure that you know on a very guttural, atavistic, intuitive level where you are. Not just where you're located, but that you are in Adventureland. Now, like I said, the borders can be very stark, but there are instances where it's crafted so that the borders glide into each other. And this happens quite nicely between Frontierland and New Orleans. Suddenly, you're in a different world and you don't know how you got there, but it was smooth. And yet it's also really easy to get oriented because of the way the different lands are delineated. I think it's actually pretty hard to get lost inside of Disneyland despite its size. There really is just too much to talk about. And in fact, there's really too much to even experience. 
Like as I was going through and experiencing Disneyland, at the back of my mind, I was trying to pick up on all the little design cues that they used, and all the little tricks and hacks and psychological jiggery pokery that they were doing to put me into the ultimate experience. And after a while, it became overwhelming and I just had to turn that shit off and let the experience just wash over me. And the level of detail is just unreal. There's no garbage on the ground. There's no gum. It's the gum gum with flavor flavor. And you can put your hand on the garbage and not feel yucky afterwards. And every cast member is out there to help you do one thing. Have the best experience ever. So Disneyland also does this thing about language. You're not tourists and you're not customers. You're guests. They're not workers. They're not employees they're cast members so it sets up a very different dynamic on the one hand is super cool because cast member implies a lot about how much control they have about their jobs how much value they have for the company and blah 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 and on the other hand I can't exactly articulate why it makes me feel uncomfortable, except for vague words about capitalism, but it makes me feel a little uncomfortable. So I found the experience interesting, but also magical. And again, like Disney as a company has a lot to answer for and is kind of evil. But Disneyland as a place has a lot to show you as a creative person to really envelop your audience in an experience and to wrap them around an experience and to show them a story that is unparalleled until next time magic is fun